So I wanted to give a breakdown about my rig and uh, how I connect things, how I connect my mini PC to the mount, and how I connect my cameras to the PC as well. I'll also show you the uh, software that I use to do capturing, uh, auto guiding, and controlling the mount. Once I'm done giving an overview of my rig, um, I plan to shoot the Iris Nebula. Uh, it'll be showing up in the north at about 10 o'clock or so, just past uh, my neighbor's rooftop, and I should have uh, clear skies for the entire night. The Iris Nebula is about a 6.8 magnitude object, uh, so uh, I might have a bit of difficulty uh, pulling out detail with this telescope, um, but we'll see what we can get. The Iris Nebula is also known as NGC 7023 and is a bright reflection nebula. There's actually a star cluster in there as well, uh, so hopefully I'll be able to pick that up. The camera that I plan to use uh, for taking shots tonight is the Canon T3. With that, I use the SkyTech CLS CCD filter. I'm also going to be using the Celestron Focal Reducer. I know I can get up close and personal with the object if I don't use it, uh, but I don't want to be shooting at f10 tonight because this is such a, a dim object for this telescope. So instead, I'm going to be using the Focal Reducer uh, to bring down my f-stop, and I should be able to get enough light uh, on this object. I had the opportunity earlier in the week to do some astrophotography and I captured my first galaxy, M81, also known as Bode's Galaxy. Um, I'm pretty happy with the image. I mean, it is my first galaxy, so uh, it is also my first time processing a galaxy. But for my first try, I think I did pretty well. On that same night, I uh, was practicing my auto guiding a bit more, getting it more fine-tuned. And I'll be using PHD2 guiding again tonight uh, to better my images and longer exposures. Even though I've only successfully done auto guiding once with my galaxy picture, I can easily see the benefits of using auto guiding. And uh, I really have to give a, a big shout out to Dylan O'Donnell for his tutorial on using PHD2 guiding and getting rid of the guide cable and just connecting your guide camera directly to your PC. I think my only challenge tonight will be the 99% moon that we're having. Uh, that is gonna be up for the full night, but it will be in the south and I am gonna be shooting towards the north. So hopefully it's not too much of an issue, but it probably will be. <laughs> I'm using my one and only Celestron 6SE telescope and sitting on top of that is the 50mm Orion uh, auto guider. The camera that's behind that is the ASI 120MCS. Both those cameras plug into my mini PC and uh, are run on separate programs. So uh, the guide camera is being used by PHD2 guiding and the Canon T3 is being used by APT. Let's get started by showing you how I set up my telescope rig and uh, then we'll start shooting. This is the mini PC that I use to control my mount. It's also used to run PHD2 and do acquisition with astrophotography tool. Sitting on top of it is a seven inch USB powered HDMI display. If you're controlling this mount with a PC like I am, use the SynScan controller to put the mount into PC direct mode. To do so, click the utility button, number three, and scroll down until you get to PC direct mode. Then hit enter. This will allow the mount to be controlled by computer input. Hey guys, so I'm back from dinner and uh, I'm going to show you how I connect my mount to my PC. First off, I start with Stellarium Scope. This uses uh, ASCOM drivers to connect to EQMod as well as the telescope. So I'll press connect here and there seems to be an issue. When troubleshooting, the best thing to do is uh, 
check what port you're using. So go to the device manager, go to port, and check the port number. Uh, in this case, I am three. So sometimes uh, the ports change depending on which USB port you're connecting your mount to. Uh, and it seems like it's changed for mine. So to fix that, I will go to select mount. It'll ask me which mount I want to connect to. And I choose the HEQ 5.6 option and press properties. And what I'm looking for here again is just the port. So I want to change the port to three. Last time I used it was at five. And press okay. Press okay. Uh, at this point you should be able to connect if your mount is turned on. So let's do so. So as I was saying, it starts up EQ mod, uh, again using ASCOM, and right now it's parked, uh, that is fine. Uh, once this is connected, you can press Start Stellarium, and this will open up the Stellarium application where you can actually pick a star and move your telescope to it. The EQ mod window uh, usually takes precedent um, in the foreground, so just minimize that if it's in the way. And there we go, we have Stellarium. So we can choose to look at the moon if we want to and make our telescope slew there. To do so, just press Control-1 uh, once you've selected an object. Oh, we have an error. Let's see what's going on. Ascom telescope driver error. Uh, error message, tracking change is not permitted without mount being in park. So I forgot to take this out of park. Uh, so let's minimize Stellarium and open up EQ mod and unpark the telescope. Now I should be able to make this thing move. I'm going to select it. Again, press Control-1. And the telescope moves. And there you go, that's how I control my mount uh, using a mini PC that I bought for uh, pretty cheap on Amazon. I also bought this 7-inch display that you're looking at right now, and uh, that was pretty cheap as well. It's usually used for Raspberry Pi projects, uh, but I find it works very well for this. Uh, you can take it off here, I put it on Velcro, so I could take this and go take a look at uh, what focus might look like at a different location. Uh, so that's very handy. Anyways, these uh, clouds are about to pass. Uh, once that happens, I'm gonna polar align the scope and get started. So here we are with the Iris Nebula in view. Uh, using APT. I'm doing 120 second exposures uh, at an ISO of 800 and uh, this image might turn out, I'm not too sure. I was doing some reading and it turns out that this might not be a good object for shooting in RGB. So because of that I might be uh, switching to another object in a bit. Uh, I'm gonna spend about an hour on this object and uh, let me see if I can pull something out. But I might switch to the North American Nebula or maybe M13. Just a quick update, I uh, did switch objects from the Iris Nebula, and I'm shooting the Messier object M13. I'm doing the same amount of exposures and an ISO of 800, so I can still use the same darks and flats at the end of the night. Hey guys, so I'm just finishing up for tonight. Uh, as you can see here, I'm doing my flat frames. Uh, and what I'm doing that with is uh, a sketch board that you can change the brightness on. I also have a t-shirt filter underneath and just a piece of paper to add some more um, diffusion. But yeah, it's about four o'clock in the morning and I finished my shots for tonight. I focused mostly on Iris uh, Nebula and also did M13. But yeah, I'm gonna pack this in after doing these flats and darks, get some good rest, and then process these up tomorrow morning. The next day, I processed two images using PixInsight. I was surprised to see that I was able to get some detail out of the Iris Nebula. 
After reading that it could be a tough object to shoot in color and under heavy light pollution, I'm happy with my end results. I spent a total of two hours on the Iris Nebula. M13 was my backup object for the night, and it's easy to see why they call it the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules. I spent a total exposure time of an hour on this object, and the outcome turned out great. <laughs>